Hey everyone, Blake Level Southeastern 14, back here with more SEC basketball transfers to discuss. And where else are we going, right? We're going to Fayetteville because the must bus is rolling right now as uh, Eric Musselman and his staff have done it yet again. Uh, surprise, surprise. As they have landed Cleek Battle from Temple, uh, the latest transfer addition for the Hogs. Of course, they've already picked up uh, Tremont Mark from Houston, picked up Keon Minifield from Washington, and now add Khalif Battle to the mix. Uh, if you want the quick five second summary on what Arkansas is getting in Khalif Battle, they are getting a score, <laughs> someone who will score the ball uh, consistently for the Hogs. That is uh, my bold prediction here in April. But uh, in all seriousness, that's what this guy does. He can score, average 17.9 points per game uh, last season, 77 threes, 35% uh, three point shooter. And as we know, pretty much every team in the SEC needs three point shooters, specifically for an Arkansas team. They did not finish great there in that category last season. I want to say they finished around 315th, something like that, from three uh, nationally. Um, and so that is an upgrade there when you look at his shooting ability. Now, where else can he help him? Uh, well, he's a 90% free throw shooter. And so that's something else where if he gets to the line, he's pretty much an automatic automatic bucket. Um, Hogs weren't great there either last season. So that instantly upgrades that category. When you look at a guy who can help them shooting-wise from multiple areas, on the floor. And that was a struggle as we talked about throughout the season. Uh, team just needed more consistent shooting. They're going to get that from battle, both the three point line uh, and the free throw line. So that consistent, that's that consistency is exactly what they needed. Um, you know, averaged about, I think he averaged at least 15 points in his three seasons at Temple. Now, some of those, uh, you know, one of those seasons in particular shortened because of injury um, and all that. But still, the numbers speak for themselves in terms of what he can do. He also averaged, um, you know, kind of looking at the minutes played, obviously he played a lot of minutes last season, around 31 minutes per game. Um, and, you know, I always talk about kind of the size aspect, right, in the SEC. It's nice to have big guards in the SEC, not always a requirement. We've seen a lot of guards that aren't necessarily, um, you know, looking like power forwards or anything. But um, still, having that size, given what you're going to go up against in the SEC, and especially when you're trying to get off those shots, um, to be able to have a consistent three-point shot, that's important, I think, um, because you know the kind of defense we see in the SEC in a year-in, year-out basis, very physical league, um, and so it helps to kind of have some of that size, some of that link to be able to counter that, and you're talking about one of the top shooting guards out there right now in the transfer portal. I mean, he was, you know, Battle was one of the top shooting guards available, um, and so I think having that size, having his ability at that position uh, to knock down shots from outside, it's a win-win, I think, for all parties uh, here because – um, you know, battle gets to step up and test his game at the SEC level, which let's be honest. I mean, playing at Temple, uh, playing in the AAC, we know some really good, you know, teams in that conference it certainly have been over the past several years. Um, so, you know, it's not like he's coming from a, a low major or anything like that. And you have a lot of, you know, wondering and, and trying to predict how he's going to translate um, his game to the SEC. I think it's going to translate perfectly fine, um, given what he can do. And so, you know, you look at those numbers uh, and everything kind of, you know, the consistency there that you've seen from him. In terms of scoring, um, you know, overall, I think shot about 41% from the floor. But I really think, you know, those numbers, making 77 threes, shooting 90% from the free throw line, those are areas that you guys know I say it all the time. Um, I, I just don't know that there's a staff that does it better in terms of how they navigate the transfer portal with, with, with kind of their ability to put all the pieces in place and kind of trying to find the right fit because there's never – you know, there's never a guarantee, and you guys understand. I say this every year. Like you could find, you could have all the the best five best players in the transfer portal, bring them all in, and people can assume that you're going to automatically go out and win every game you play. But it's really all about the chemistry, and we won't know until you know they step on the floor what that chemistry is going to look like between these guys. But if you do try to piece it together, um, it's hard not to be excited and impressed. I think with what Eric Musselman and his staff have done putting this roster together, uh, because it's not just battle. You know, we talked about Tremont Mark, we talked about Keon Minifield, but it's also the guys that you expect to be returning, right? We know Trevor Brazil is returning and him coming off an injury, um, you know, looked like a breakout star this past season before the injury took place. You've got that in the mix, but you know, you've got Layden Blocker coming in. You got Bayfall coming in. <laughs> um, you know, the other guys that right now you expect to be on the roster, obviously some are still kind of in the air. Um, we know Anthony Black declared for the draft today, but I mean, that's, you were never really expecting Anthony Black to return. I mean, he's going to be a lottery pick. Um, you know, the Davis question, I know some people have, how does that play into this? Um, 
uh, you know, I obviously don't don't know the answer to that necessarily, but um, I think it's at least looking at what we know with the roster next season, adding battle to the mix just gives Arkansas what every team needs. And not to say they didn't have it before, but he gives them what every team needs. And you know what that is? <laughs> that is a guy that when you find yourself in a two-point game with a minute to go um, and you're turning around trying to figure out who do we need to get the ball to, who's the guy that's proven that he can score consistently, or let's say we got to have a three, um, and we got to get that ball somewhere to, to get somebody to knock down a three. But when you look at Battle's history and, and what he's been able to do in terms of scoring the ball and the consistency there, it's hard not to believe that he will not be option one or two when you look at that for, for Arkansas next season. Um, because even, I mean, we're talking about a guy who really came off the bench too. That's important to remember. Um, you know, Temple didn't really start a lot of games, but still was able to play. 30 something minutes, right? Still able to put up the points that he put up um, and not necessarily starting a ton of games um, while he was there at Temple. So um, I think that is just really important to keep in mind as you start to look at maybe how his game is going to translate here. Because, you know, the way I see it is you've certainly got a, a guy like this that you're going to add to the mix now. And you sort of, again, you're, you're trying to piece together what the skill set is of all these guys that Arkansas has brought in. And I think that is what you really are looking at and knowing that if it all comes together, the way that it looks like it's going to on paper, I mean, they are going to be right there once again with a chance to play into the second weekend or beyond in the NCAA tournament. And of course, you know, back-to-back -back elite eight to sweet 16 appearance this year, um, even as finishing, you know, not a great finish in the sec. They've still proven that they've been able to put it all together when it counts. And I think when you're looking at the guys they're bringing in, we talked about, you know, a Mark, you know, Jermon Mark coming in, um, somebody who was obviously could score the ball. Um, he could defend on that Houston team. We talked about Minifield, what he brings to the table, you know, as, as a lead guard type guy. Um, there's so many things to like about what, you know, especially when you look at this backcourt. And that's not even, so we'll talk about the front court. We start breaking down the positions going into next season, but there's a lot to be impressed about there too. But when you think about the additions that Arkansas is going to have in the, the backcourt, knowing that you're losing some guys from, from this past season, um, these are necessities. And I think going out, upgrading your, your shooting was always going to be priority number one, given the struggles they had their last season. Obviously, you've got some guys coming in you feel like are going to help you improve your shooting is from the free throw line too. And I know that doesn't sound like a big thing, but let's think about it, guys. I mean, it's an Arkansas team we've seen be able to really get to the free throw line. And, you know, that's kind of just the style that they've had to play. But I think you've got more of that element now on this team, maybe heading into next season where they can give you more of that outside shooting, uh, which, as we've always said, can be a great separator in the SEC because historically it's a league that has not shot the ball great from outside. But you've seen some teams this offseason go out, pick up some shooting in the transfer portal. We'll see how that translates going into next season. But um, Battle joins that mix as someone who can knock down shots and as always, people are going to ask the same question, right? Can Eric Muslim keep everyone happy? <laughs> That's what they're going to ask. But you know what I say? They've been asking that question for years now, and it's worked out okay. Um, you know, will everyone be happy with their playing time? Maybe not. But this this staff and Eric Musselman in particular has proven that he knows how to kind of push the right buttons. I think at the right time and. There, there may be stretches where, you know, it's a matter of finding that chemistry with so many new players, but that's just a given now in this landscape in college basketball. And so I don't look at that any different as I, as I would for any other team, that when you add so many new pieces, sometimes it can take a little while to gel. We'll see if this is one of those teams that maybe just has it early. Um, maybe it takes a little while to find it, but I think if you're just piecing it together on paper, hard not to love what Arkansas has done here, especially now with the addition of Khalif Battle. So there you go. There's some thoughts on Khalif Battle making his way to Arkansas. And of course, we got it all covered. Uh, if you want more videos here on the channel, be sure to that subscribe button and hit that like button as well. It helps us out. Uh, as I said earlier, I've got videos um, on the additions of Mark and Medfield. Uh, so you can check those out on the channel. If you're new here as an Arkansas fan, and we got a lot of you already supporting the channel and we appreciate it. As always, a lot of SEC football and SEC baseball stuff as well. So be sure to hit that subscribe button and check it all out here at Southeastern 14. But uh, appreciate you guys as always, and we'll talk to you again here soon at Southeastern 14.